Okay, folks, welcome to something a little bit different. Yes, we're here in Flight Simulator, Flight Simulator X Steam Edition. A little bit different for me, a bit of a change from the long dark. However, I know there's a lot of Flight Sim fans out there. I haven't played it for many, many years, but I've kind of got back into it recently with the Steam Edition when I picked it up in Steam style for a few quid. And, uh, yeah, kind of, kind of getting back into it and kind of enjoying it a little bit. So today, we're going to get out in Flight Simulator. We're going to do a flight. Um, and we're gonna see how we get on so this is gonna be quite cool it's not really a tutorial as such but if you I suppose it could be a bit of a tutorial show you how to do things uh, if you've never flown in a flight sim before or you've kind of done it but never done it properly and you want to do it properly we've got a, a little bit of a hopefully it can kind of act as a bit of a basic tutorial on how to do uh, this kind of flight but I'm not gonna claim to be an expert and I, you know, there are people out there who know far more about it than I do. But I'm going to give this a try. I can take it off. I can cruise it. I can land it. And we're going to be doing this on ILS using um, autopilot and things like that. So uh, I'm going to show you how to set all that up, how to do a flight, and how to take off, how to land, and all that kind of good stuff. So let's get ourselves going. We're here in the main startup menu in free flight. And we've already set it up, but I'm going to show you what I have done. First off, we're in the Boeing 737-800 series, and I found a skin for British Airways, because I thought it'd be kind of cool to have a proper real-life airline rather than one of the pretend ones that come with the base game. Uh, so that has been installed. However, that's the only mod that I've put on the game. There are no other mods or anything on the game at the moment, only this repaint. That's it. Uh, so we have a British Airways 7th. Three seven, and we are at Edinburgh, and we have a flight plan. So let's go into the flight plan. As you can see, we're going to be going from Edinburgh. We're actually going to start at the gate. Uh, I'm going to cut out the taxiing bit because that's just a bit of a faff, um, and I'm sure you don't really want to see me uh, and my bad taxiing because I'm really not very good at it. So we're going to start off at the gate, doing the initial setup, and then we'll uh, head off to the runway, and we'll uh, we'll pick up the flight from there. We're going to be heading to Liverpool. Uh, we're going to be heading to Liverpool Airport. So it's a relatively short flight from Edinburgh in Scotland up to Liverpool, Northern England. Uh, we're going to be flying under instrument flight rules, so IFR, rather than VFR for visual flight rules. So we are going to be flying instrument rated. And we're going to be in using the low altitude airways. I've already generated my route, so here it is. We're going to be flying from Edinburgh through a few waypoints down to Liverpool. However, because it's such a short flight, we don't need to worry too much about these waypoints. We can just use uh, the vectors that were given by um, air traffic control, and they will vector us round to the airport. So we haven't got to worry too much about any of that. Uh, cruising altitude 17,000 feet. Before we leave this map, though, there are some bits of information we need. We're going to be using the ILS, and we're going to be using, uh, which is the instrument landing system, for anyone who doesn't know, and we're going to be using... Um, the autopilot to do a lot of this flight, of which all of it to be perfectly honest with you. So there's some bits of information that we need to have in order to set it all up and to do that. And first of all, we need to head to the airport that we're going to be taking off from. So that's going to be Edinburgh. So let's head up to Edinburgh. Hopefully I can bring Edinburgh Airport up. There we go. So bits of information we need. We don't actually need the vast majority of this. Uh, main runway at Edinburgh is uh, either runway 6 or runway 24, depending on the direction you're using it in. Um, so we're going to be, I suspect, uh, taking off from runway 6. That's probably the one we're going to get assigned. Um, because I've done a few tests of this flight, and that's the one I've been assigned every single time. But we're going to note down the information we need for both runways. And all we need to know is the heading. We don't need anything else. We don't need the ILS frequencies for these because this is where we're leaving from, not where we're landing into. So all we need to know are the runway headings. And that's so we can set the autopilot up for departure. So for runway 6, the heading is 064. So I've written that down on my pad that I've got in front of me. And runway 24, it's 244. So I've written that down as well. So that's all we need from here, from our departure airport. But as I say, I think we're going to go on runway 6. So that's all we need from that one. Next one, we need to go down to our destination. So that's Liverpool Airport. Uh, we'll bring that up. There we go. And we need a little bit more information from this one. This is the airport we're going to be landing in two. Um, again, one runway, runway 9 or runway 27, depending on which way you're using it. I suspect, again, based on my uh, 
test flights that I've been doing were going to be assigned runway 9 approach. Uh, but I, again, I'm going to note down the information for both runways just in case. So what we need is the ILS frequency. Now, as you can see, it's the same for both runways. So we need to write that down. So that's 111.750. So we just need to write down that. So that's the ILS frequency for the runway. We also just need to make a note of the two ILS IDs. So for runway 9, it's ILVR. And for runway 27, it's ILQ. And that just allows us to make sure that we are on the correct ILS frequency when we come to uh, the airport. Uh, and I'm also just going to make a note of the ILS headings. So for runway 9, again, that's 090. And for runway 27, it's 270. And that is uh, obviously just so that we can use that for reference. So we know roughly where the airport is when we get there. So that's all the information that we need. Uh, to be able to do this flight. So I've written all that down on my pad. So let's come out of here. It's probably going to ask me to save it because it always does. So we'll just overwrite the one that's already there. And I think we're all set up. So I'm just going to check the time because obviously we want to do this in the day so you guys can see what's going on. Fair weather I've got set. I haven't got clear sky set but I've got fair weather set so we're not likely to have uh, any real weather issues to think about. Also, in terms of air traffic control, uh, there is a bit of air traffic control, uh, a bit of air traffic setup. So we've uh, we we will see some other aircraft out there, and there will be other aircraft moving about. Uh, and we're going to start with the ATC window open. So I think we're good to go. So let's go into the game. Okay, so we're in the game. Uh, we've got a few little things to do. First off, we need to move the ATC window out of the way up the corner and make it a bit smaller. And we also need to zoom the view out. We're in virtual cockpit, which is how we're going to be flying this. Uh, but we just need to zoom it out so we've got a more realistic uh, field of view. Right then, so we're here in the aircraft. We're on the gate. So what we need to do is do the initial bits of setup uh, ready to do this flight so let's have a look at the autopilot panel because that's uh, where we need to do the first bit of work so the course uh, indicator here is just for our reference it's not going to affect the autopilot in any way in the way we're going to be using it so we need to set this oh, well we don't need to set it you don't have to do anything with it but it's uh, gonna make life uh, a little bit easier for us as a memory prompt for the runway heading at Liverpool where we're going for so I'm going to put in 090 for runway 9 because that is the most likely runway we're going to be assigned so that's the, that's basically the heading of the runway at Liverpool that we're going to be landing on and I am working on the assumption it's going to be uh, runway number 9 if it turns out we get assigned a different runway we can always change that because we wrote that information down so that's that set up the next thing we want to set up is our speed so we're going to set up our speed for the climb, the climb out once we take off, and the climb speed for the Boeing 737 is 240 knots. So we're going to dial in 240. So that's the climb speed for when we depart the runway here. Obviously it's worth mentioning at the moment all the autopilot controls are all turned off, so none of this is actually going to do anything at the moment until we switch it all on. We're just getting ourselves set up. Okay, so the heading that we, we want to set here is going to be runway heading for departure because that's inevitably what we're going to be asked to fly by air traffic control is runway heading once we take off. Now again, we don't know which uh, runway we're going to be assigned. Uh, we'll find that out in a minute, but I think it's probably fair to say we're going to be taking off from runway 6 here at Edinburgh Airport. So we're going to dial in the heading for runway 6 at Edinburgh, which of course is 064. So we're going to dial that in. And if we get assigned the other runway, we'll just change that before we leave the stand. Uh, altitude, again, we haven't been assigned that yet. We'll get assigned that in a minute, but we will just dial in... Well, we'll dial in... Um, I don't know. We'll dial in about 8,000 feet. That'll do for now. We can always change that once we've been assigned an actual departure altitude. 
So that is the initial setup of the autopilot all done. So let's zoom back out again. And so the next thing we need to do is set up the ILS for Liverpool uh, for our arrival. Because we're going to be navigating using uh, GPS and vectors, we're not going to need to set up nav, uh, nav beacons for waypoints or anything like that. Uh, because it's such a short flight. So we're just going to put the ILS information directly into the radio now for the runway we're going to be landing on at Liverpool. So let's bring up the instrument panel and we want to bring up the radio stack. So here is the radio stack. Now virtually all of this is handled by the simulation. We don't have to worry about any of it. But this is where we need to set the ILS frequency for Liverpool's runway just here. Now obviously there is only one runway at Liverpool. Whichever direction we're going to be landing on, it's the same frequency. So we just need to dial that frequency in. And that's 111.75. So let's just dial in 111.75. takes a while with these controls. There we go, so that's 111.75. Okay, and obviously at the moment that's in the standby section, so we just need to click the little switch in the middle to flick it over to be the active. So now it's in active, 111.75. So when we get to Liverpool Airport, that will pick up the ILS frequency, the ILS beacon, and we can use that to do our landing. So that's all set up. So let's get rid of the radio stack. So that's all of our preparation done uh, in terms of our departure and our arrival at Liverpool. So the next thing we need to do is to tune to ground and get our various clearances. So we're going to tune to Liverpool uh, to Edinburgh ground and we're going to request IFR clearance. Edinburgh ground, speedbird 7037, IFR to Liverpool, ready to copy. Speedbird 7037 is clear to Liverpool Airport as filed. Fly runway heading, climb and maintain 13000. Departure frequency is 121.2, squawk 0531. Speedbird 7037 clear to Liverpool Airport as filed. Fly runway heading, climb and maintain 13000. Departure on 121.2, squawk 0531. Speedbird 7037, read back correct. Contact ground on 121.75. Okay, so we have been given our departure clearance and we've also been given our departure altitude, which is 13,000 feet. So I have gone in and I have added that into the altitude section of the autopilot. So we're now set to the correct departure altitude and uh, we're set to the correct departure speed. And the only thing we just need to double check is going to be the heading and we'll be assigned our runway in a second. Uh, so we're pretty much ready to go. So let's request our taxi clearance. Edinburgh ground. Speedbird 7037 with Oscar, ready to taxi IFR. Speedbird 7037, taxi 2 and hold short of runway 6 using taxiway Echo Alpha. Contact tower on 118.7 when ready. Taxi 2 and hold short runway 6 using taxiway Echo Alpha. Speedbird 7037. Okay, so we have been assigned runway 6, which we expected, so the heading that we've got in there is correct. So it's 064 is our heading. So everything is now set up. The nav uh, in the radio is set up for the ILS at Liverpool, where we're going to be landing, and we have the autopilot set up ready for our departure. So everything is ready and set to go. All we need to do now is taxi to the runway. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I shall see you at the entrance to the runway. Okay, so we are at the threshold of the room. Well, we're not at the threshold. We're at the holding point at the end of the taxiway. So let's tune to Edinburgh Tower and request our takeoff clearance. Edinburgh Tower, Speedbird 7037, ready to go. Runway 6, IFR to Liverpool. Speedbird 7037, clear for takeoff. Runway 6. Okay, so we are now clear, clear for, takeoff. for takeoff. So last Runway little thing to do is Speedbird set flaps to 15. So just pressing the F7 key to bring the flaps to 15. You can see the little indicator moving there. So flaps are set. So let's move forward onto the runway then. I'm not very good at taxiing from the cockpit view, but we are going to try our level best to get this right. We 
we are. We're not quite right. Um, ho hopefully we can correct that as we go down the runway. Okay, so, uh, runway heading is uh, 064. We're going to turn on heading select. We're also going to turn on altitude hold. And we're going to arm the auto throttle. So, everything is all set to go. Heading select is on. Altitude hold is on. Autopilot is off. The speed and throttle settings and the direction and altitude settings are separate. So these two are primed, but they're not on yet. Auto throttle is armed, and as soon as I press the speed button, we will start to accelerate down the runway. There you go, you can see the throttle section of the autopilot is now active. And away we go. I'm not lined up very well on the runway, but started our takeoff roll and we're looking for 140 knots on the speed indicator which is takeoff speed for this aircraft the auto throttle is throttling us up there's 140 knots so we're rotating and we're in the air we have a positive rate so we're going to go gear up and we are just going to turn on the autopilot so I can now let go of the controls and the autopilot will take care of everything Speedbird 7037, contact Edinburgh departure on 121.2 121.2 for Speedbird 7037 Orbit 8750, clear for so we're going to tune Edinburgh Departure, contact Edinburgh Departure. The autopilot is taking control of everything because we set it up really well before we left. Just acknowledge our instruction. Whilst we're dialing it into the autopilot, so we've been told to turn to heading 185. So that is what we are just dialing into. Traffic at 6 o'clock, 4 miles at 500. Have one dash 8, report them in sight. Speedbird 7037, have the traffic. I don't have the traffic, but I'm not going to if it's at my 6 o'clock, am I? Speedbird 7037, turn right, heading to 115. Cessna Golf, X-ray, November Uniform, X-ray, Edinburgh Approach, Roger, Altimeter, 2992, turn right, heading 215, Speedbird 7037. See, an awful lot happens on takeoff, as you can see. Having the autopilot there to deal with it is a real help. Speed's increased, so let's get rid of the flap. So we are now retracting the flaps. Edinburgh Departure, Roger, Altimeter, 2992. Orbit 8750, turn right, heading 180, resume own navigation, climb and maintain 11000. Turn right, heading 180, proceed on course, climb and maintain 11000. Orbit 8750, orbit 8750, traffic is 2 o'clock, 4 miles at 4200, Boeing 737, report them in sight. Orbit 8750, traffic in sight. Okay, so an awful lot happened there on takeoff, but just to summarise what we did, obviously we set the autopilot up before we took off, so all of that was already set. Uh, the speed is set to 240, which is our climb out uh, speed. The auto throttle was armed just before we took off, and we then pressed the speed button to activate the speed hold, which obviously then accelerated us down the runway. The speed section being completely separate to the altitude and heading hold sections. Heading hold and altitude hold were armed, though, ready to go. And once we'd lifted off the ground manually and brought the gear up and we were all sort of nice and positive rate and climbing, we then just pressed the autopilot on switch, which turned on the main autopilot and put us onto the heading, which was the runway heading, and started to climb towards the altitude we've been assigned. We were then given two instructions to turn to different headings to the right. First one to 185, which we dialed in, and the second one to 215, which we dialed in, and that's the heading we find ourselves on now. So, we are climbing... Oh, and then we retracted the flaps. Obviously, as we uh, picked up speed, 
we uh, brought the flaps to zero. So we are now flying at 243 knots, which is close enough, and we're climbing uh, at 6,800. Turn left, heading 185. Resume on navigation. Turn left, heading 185. Proceed on course. Speed burn 7037. Okay, so there's our final departure instruction. So we've now been told to turn back to heading 185, which takes us down our assigned uh, navigation track to the next navigation beacon. And uh, from this point on, we can just carry on flying this heading until air traffic control tells us to do something else because it's a relatively short flight. Um, and we're going to be following our GPS track for the most part anyway, which is the purple line on the multifunction display that you can see just there. See that purple line. Solid purple line is our pre planned GPS track, and the dotted purple line is our autopilot selection. And the white line is where we actually are, and we're going to fly roughly parallel to us. That's absolutely fine. So let's come back out of there. So, yes, we've now been told to, uh, to turn to 185, which we've done. And we're still climbing up. We're at uh, nearly 9,000 feet now at 237 knots. As soon as we pass 10,000 feet we can increase our speed and we can dial in uh, 280 knots once we go through 10,000 feet and once we go through 16,000 feet uh, if we of course uh, are given permission to climb that high we can uh, increase it even further. Okay, so we're now tuning into Scottish Centre Control. Scottish Centre, Speedbird 7037 is climbing to 9,900, Fort 13,000. Speedbird 7037, Scottish Centre, Roger. Altimeter 2992. Okay, so we are now above 10,000 feet, so we can dial in a speed increase to 280 knots. Oops, too far there. Scottish Center orbit 8750 is climbing through 9800 for 11000. Orbit 8750, Scottish Center, Roger. Altimeter 2992. Okay, so we can now increase our speed to 280 knots and we're still climbing up to 13,000 feet. There's a good chance we should get assigned our 17,000 feet um, pre planned altitude fairly shortly. And once we go above 16,000 feet, we can increase our speed to 300. Knots, which is maximum cruise speed for this aircraft. Orbit 8750 is a turboprop that was just behind us on the taxiway and on the runway. You didn't see them, but they were behind me on the taxiway. Okay, so we are cruising now, really. We're still climbing up. But we're now well on route towards Liverpool. So what I think we're going to do now is we are going to skip through this bit because not very much is going to happen for... Uh, Bird 703, oh, there we go. So we've been given, just climb acknowledge that. Speed bird so we'll just set our altitude to 17,000. I hate how it jumps like that. 17,000 and once we go above 16,000 feet we can increase our cruise speed to 320 knots but there isn't going to be very much else happening for probably about another half an hour or so while we uh, continue flying down towards Liverpool so I am going to skip through the next bit and I shall join you again when we get down to uh, when we get a bit closer to Liverpool Airport Okay, so we've started now to receive our descent instructions. There we go. Okay, so we are now on our way down towards Liverpool Airport. We've been told to turn right to heading 220. 
which obviously swings us out to uh, bring us back onto the correct alignment for the runway. Uh, and we've also been told to descend to 11,000 feet, so we are going to do that. And we're also going to need to reduce our speed as we come down. So initially we're going to drop to 280. So that's our initial speed because we drop it below 16,000 feet. And as we descend a little bit lower, we'll start to bring our speed down a little bit more. So. We're now on the way into Liverpool Airport. So uh, just before we go any further, let's just show you exactly how far we've come. We're there, and we're obviously now on our assigned approach. If you just zoom out, you can see that we've flown all the way down here and all the way down there, pretty much in a dead straight line, uh, before making our turn. And you can see there's the runway there. Uh, no, it isn't. Here's the runway here. So we are going to basically be vectored out this way to slowly turn back to intercept the runway over here. So that's what is going to happen. We don't need to do anything else. Everything else is already set up at this stage. We're just going to follow the instructions from air traffic control. So, uh, yeah, all we need to do is just monitor everything, make sure that we're descending correctly, and that we're following the correct information so we're now on heading two to zero and we are descending through 14,000 feet still heading towards 11,000 feet there's a good chance we may get a lower altitude before we actually get to 11,000 feet in which case we'll obviously adjust the autopilot settings I probably will do another video doing uh, doing a similar thing as this but doing it manually rather than using the autopilot as well so we'll do a manual takeoff, manual climb out, manual landing, and just use the autopilot for the cruise phase. But right now we'll stick with doing it the uh, the way the commercial pilots generally do it, which is to use the autopilot and the ILS on the autopilot until you get fairly close to the runway. And of course, then you disconnect it and you fly it manually. Now that's where it gets a little tricky because there are actually two switches that we need to turn off. We need to turn off the auto throttle and we need to turn off the um, Autopilot master switch just so that it uh, disconnects everything for us and we can throttle back to a nice safe zero throttle for landing. But we'll worry about that a little bit later because we're not quite there yet. We have not uh, yet picked up the ILS for Repeat Liverpool Airport. Turn left heading 190. Okay, so we're now being vectored in to the runway. So we've turned to heading 190. That brings us pretty much at right angles to where the runway is, to the extended centre line of the runway. And then we will probably receive another vector to actually bring us in to the runway heading, or roughly towards the runway heading, and then we'll take over on the ILS. We should, very shortly... I was about to say we should very shortly get a further descent instruction. Okay, so we're just going to drop ourselves down to 4,000 feet, and as we start to descend we're also going to reduce our speed, so that's going to come back down again to 240 knots initially. Oh, that'll do, 238 is close enough, because as we slow down we're also going to be dropping our speed. When we reach our assigned altitude of 4,000 feet, we'll reduce our speed even further to 180 knots and start to bring in the flaps. So we'll initially... Okay, so I've been asked to speed up my descent, so I'm just going to put an extra click on the vertical speed. Okay, so we are, we've been asked to expedite our descent down to 4,000, so I've put an extra click on the vertical speed uh, setting on the autopilot just so we come down a little bit quicker. We're now 
below 10,000 feet, but our speed is already set to 238 knots. So we're actually doing 248, so that's absolutely fine. As I was saying, when we get to our assigned altitude of 4,000 feet, we're going to slow down even further to 180 knots, and we're going to bring in the first uh, setting on the flaps. We're going to put the flaps to 5 at that point. And then when we get our landing clearance and we're a little bit further down the descent, at that point we will be fully established on the ILS and on the glide slope. We'll slow down even further to 155 knots and then we'll bring in flaps 15 ready for landing. And of course we'll also put our gear down at some point. <laughs> That's rather important. I did uh, one of the very first landings I did where I was really proud of it uh, in uh, Flight Simulator X years ago when it first came out. I landed a Cessna and it was absolutely perfect approach, perfect touchdown, apart from the fact I forgot to lower the landing gear, so I obviously then crashed on the runway, which was a bit embarrassing. Bird 7037, turn left heading 185, descend and maintain 4,000 feet. Bird 7037. Okay, so we've been told to make a 5 degree turn to port, 5 degree turn to the left, and we're still descending to 4,000. We're very nearly there. We're at 6,500 feet now. So we're almost at our assigned altitude. So we'll be slowing down a little bit further very, very shortly. And we shall also be receiving some further. We should uh, be intercepting the, uh, the ILS. In fact, I think we have. We have intercepted it, but for some reason we're not getting the ident. Uh, Should be receiving some ident morse code. There we go. There we go. So that is the indicator to us that we have intercepted the ILS. For some reason that wasn't turned on. It shouldn't. It normally is, but it uh, obviously wasn't. So normally you'd hear that morse code. Once you've got that and you're happy that you're on the correct ILS frequency, we can turn the morse code off as we know that we're established. But you can also see on our multifunction displays that we have ILVR 90 and the DME, which is the distance measuring equipment, 24.5 miles away. So we are on the correct ILS. And you can also see various things have appeared. We've got the two little diagonal markers. Uh, well, at the moment we've only got the one. We won't pick up the other one until we actually establish on the ILS, which is the glide slope. And we've also got the little runway indicator there for the ILS. So we are established on the ILS frequency, but we have not actually established on the localizer just yet. So we will get another uh, instruction shortly to make another left turn, but we have reached our assigned altitude, so we're going to begin our slowing down process. So we're going to drop our speed to 180 knots, and as the speed begins to fall, we will bring in flaps 5. Now that's actually three presses on the flap increase button, but we won't do it until we've dropped below 200 knots. Because if we do, we get lots and lots of warning alarms going off. I suspect we'll very shortly be given another vector to line us up roughly in the general direction of the airport. 22 miles away. Okay, I'm just going to start bringing in some flap. There we go, so we're at flap 5 and we're maintaining 180 knots. So we're all nice and stable and we are established on the ILS frequency, just not on the localizer yet. We should receive a final descent instruction shortly as well. There we go.
Okay, quite a lot happening I'll, uh, I'll explain it all in a moment. Liverpool Tower, Speedbird 7037 is 22 miles west, inbound ILS, runway 9 -er approach. Speedbird 7037, Liverpool Tower, make straight in, runway 9 -er. altimeter 2 9 -er, 9 -er 2 Fly straight in, runway 9 -er. Speedbird 7037. My aircraft is a bit unhappy with me with the flat 5 setting just there because we've sped up a little bit on the turn. So I shall knock some flap out until we uh, start to slow down again a little bit. Okay, so we are now established. We're going to turn on the approach hold switch. Which is that one. And the aircraft is now going to make the final turn to line us up with the runway. So quite a lot happening there. I can now pop my flaps back up to flaps 5. So we've slowed back down again. So we were given instructions to turn to heading 120. Uh, one and we were also told to descend to altitude 2500, which we did. Uh, I also inadvertently caught the bank angle limit switch, which meant I could only bank at 10 degrees, which was a bit annoying from my point of view. So I just had to try and sort that out to knock it back again. Uh, but we have set the altitude to 2500. The speed is at 180 with flaps 5. Uh, we got the alarm because we'd sped up a little bit during that descent from 4000 to 2500. So I think a little learning curve there for me is perhaps it's best to leave that speed reduction until we get to this point, then drop the speed down and bring in flaps 5. So I think that's, uh, that's a learning point for me there. I did say I wasn't an expert, but you know now, if you're doing it yourself, wait until you hit your 2,500 feet or whatever your final assigned altitude is before you do anything with your flaps. Just speed reduction. So we are now at 180 knots with flaps 5 deployed. And we have turned off heading select and turned on the approach hold switch. And that's now using the ILS to line us up with the runway, which it virtually has managed to do. We have not established on the glide slope just yet, but we are lining up with the runway and we're maintaining 180 knots. Getting ready to lower the landing gear, which is the next step, but we also have something else that we need to do. In fact, I'll do that first. I'm just going to bring up the instrument panel going to bring up the throttle panel. We just need to arm the speed brakes. So let's move the speed brake lever to arm. And then we can get rid of that. So that will deploy the air brakes, the speed brakes when we touch down so we can stop. I'm now going to bring the gear down. So the landing gear is coming down. We have established on the localizer and we are lined up with the runway. Or virtually lined up with the runway. As we know, the heading for the runway is 090, and we are at 087 at the moment, so we're very, very close to lining up perfectly with the runway. We are still below the glide slope. We haven't intercepted the glide slope just yet, but that's where we want to be. We want to be below it, and then when we intercept it, we will start to follow it. You can actually see the pappy lights ahead of me. So I'm now going to reduce my speed down to 155 knots and I'm going to start bringing in more flaps. I'm going to go up another notch of flap and then we're going to bring it to flap 15 which is our final configuration for landing. So pre-landing system we are now established on the glide slope the little diamond icon has moved and we're now descending towards the runway. Speed is set to 155 knots. We haven't uh, throttled back to that speed just yet, but the uh, auto throttle should be dealing with that very shortly. The gear is down. The speed brake is armed. And we are established 
lined up with the runway and we are coming in to land. We've not yet received our landing clearance, we should get that very shortly. Once we have our landing clearance. So we are nicely established on the glide slope. Well, we're very slightly below glide slope, but that shouldn't be a problem. It should be absolutely fine. So I'm getting ready now to take manual control of the aircraft. See, I won't be doing that just yet. I'm going to leave it until we're a little bit closer to the runway. We're now on a heading perfectly aligned with the runway centerline. We can see the white and red pappy lights, which are the precision approach something indicator. I think it's precision approach positioning indicator or something like that. And we can also see the runway. So we know that we are established on the glide slope and we are coming into the runway. We are nice and trimmed. We've got our speed down to 155, flaps 15, speed brake armed. Now the one thing I can't very easily do with this uh, aircraft is deploy reverse thrust, so I'm actually going to do the brake, I'm going to use the brakes when I land, which uh, obviously you wouldn't normally do, because you would just burn the brakes, but I'm going to use the brakes to try and help me stop. So there we go, we're pretty much perfectly aligned with the runway. So I'm getting ready now to disconnect the auto throttle and the autopilot ready to make our landing so as we're coming in we are perfectly aligned with the runway and the pappy lights are telling us we're on a perfect light slope Autopilot disconnect, auto throttle disconnect, throttles have been throttled down, we're flaring, flare, 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 touchdown on the runway, speed brake deployed, nose gear touchdown, brakes on, and we're slowing ourselves down to 80 knots, and we're going to slow ourselves down to 60 knots, and we're going to slow ourselves down again. Take, whoops, no we're not, we're going to carry on, and we're going to carry on down the runway, just going to uh, increase my throttle a little bit just to maintain the speed that I'm travelling at, looking for a taxiway to exit the runway, we should have probably have exited at that taxiway, but uh, obviously we weren't quite slow enough so I couldn't do it, so we're uh, going to have to come off down here. Yes, I shall. I'm just not able yet. And there we are. So we're now exiting the runway onto the taxiway. And there we have it. That is a flight. Okay, so we've requested a taxi to the gate. We're not going to bother doing that on here. So that was an IFR ILS flight from Edinburgh to Liverpool. We have landed at Liverpool Airport with a perfect approach. Let's just see if we can uh, go back in time a little bit and watch that instant replay. Uh, I don't know how far back we've got to go. Uh, I'm going to say about 90 seconds, which I'm hoping is going to be enough. Oh, no, we've already landed. Hang on, let's... Uh, Instant replay. Let's see if we can go back then a little bit further than that uh, to 120 seconds. Let's see if that's enough. No, we do already <laughs> touched down again. So let's try again, and we'll do 200 seconds, not 500 seconds, 200 seconds. Hopefully that will be enough. 
There we go, and we're going to pop ourselves to see what it looks like from the tower. So that was our flights from uh, Edinburgh to Liverpool. That was an ILS approach um, and how to use the ILS and the autopilot. So you can see right from the start, it was all down to preparation. We did our work beforehand. We looked uh, looked up all the information that we needed before we set off. We configured the autopilot while we were still at the gate, so everything was already set up with our, sp our climb out speed for the auto throttle. We had our heading selected ready for climb out. Uh, we had our altitude selected ready for climb out. And we'd also already configured our navigation equipment with the ILS frequency for Liverpool Airport because we knew we weren't going to need to use any other navigation beacons along the way. It'd be a bit more complicated if we did, but because this was a simple approach, we didn't have to do that. We literally just had to um, set up the ILS frequency ready for our landing. And of course, then we intercepted the ILS and came in for a perfect ILS approach and autopilot landing. Obviously, at this stage, I disconnected the autopilot and we uh, did the actual touchdown and roll out manually. As you can see, we throttled back just before the threshold for a perfect touchdown. Uh, not quite perfect, we bounced. I didn't realise we bounced, but anyway, for a touchdown on the runway at Liverpool Airport. And then we rolled out down the runway. So... That was our ILS flight from Edinburgh to Liverpool. I really hope you find it useful. If, you've, if you have never flown Flight Simulator ILS before and you're not quite sure how to do it, hopefully that's a useful guide for you on how to use ILS. Uh, I'm going to do some more complicated flights as well. We're going to do um, some more short flights. We're going to try some different aircraft. We're also going to do some longer flights using nav beacons. Uh, so we can sort of get to know how to use the navigation systems uh, and how to fly and land the planes. Uh, and we're going to do some manual stuff as well. So uh, a little bit more to come from Flight Simulator. And I really hope you've enjoyed it. And I shall see you again, as always, very, very soon.